I remember this like it was yesterday, dude. Back in the race studio, so welcome back to another driver education video. I'm gonna be completely honest, dude. The first edit, Tito asked me to do this and I was a bit skeptical, right? Like I was like, man, I know I've been driving for quite some time, but like to translate some of the stuff is difficult. But I will say the first episode did really, really well. And we had a ton of comments and like community chiming in. So here we are doing a second one. So in this episode, let's dive into specifically my first drive with the GR86. For those that are new to the channel, we debuted a brand new race car it's a Toyota GR86 we went out to California for the LZ world tour which is like a huge spotlight of influencers and obviously Southern California is like a mecca of drifting so with that there was pro kids driving and we had the whole mix-up of everything for me personally this was my first competition in the car and like the first time to even tandem in the car we actually qualified fourth and then we finished in fourth which was so interesting man the first time in the GR86 so it was a whole weekend of firsts Let's dive into some footage. All right, cool. So first up, we're gonna run through my first qualifying run ever in the GR86. So for all the drivers out there that are going to qualify, hear me out, right? So in drifting, we get two qualifying runs. Usually you take a run, you wait for everybody to go again, and you take another run. So the worst thing you could do is spin out on your first run because you have all the anxiety to wait for the whole class to go for your next chance. Not gonna lie, dude. I had a ton of, like, I was thinking I was gonna spin out. Like I actually had what I would consider like negative thoughts on my qualifying run and reason being is like I'm in a new car I had the you know the factory reps are out like we're in California there's so much pressure kind of on this moment so for me let's watch this run and then we'll recap on kind of my mindset everybody was looking at Nate saying this is a guy that seems to have this figured out but it is a first debut weekend for this competitive chassis so let's see how he gets on Nate, big initiation getting that car out there. This is a man who basically set this track out. He was one of the first ones to run it, so he might have the most experience here. And we're already seeing that with Nate. Coming from the V8, going to the 2J, it doesn't even matter to him. He is so smooth and so soft on the pedal. It's, it's, it's almost relaxing to watch him drive. And, and for a car that is so aggressive, like, look at it. Just, just makes it look like butter. Goes a little bit wide there. It's, 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 it's almost perfect. Yeah. All right, so like, so let's back up and I wanna just mention a few tips when qualifying. So in the practice sessions, right, at competitions, I have a spotter and my spotter, Matt, is very particular with turn one into turn two, right? So whatever that means, whatever track you're at, think about it like this. As a driver, if I do not do the first turn correctly, I'm not allowed to talk about the second turn because the first turn affected the second turn. And I really feel like when I watch this and I think about how I got a 90 on my first qualifying run in the GR86 ever, it was that mindset of if you do not nail the first turn, we can't talk about the second turn. Once you nail the first turn and the second turn, then you can talk about the third turn. And we literally went through the track that way. So just remember your marks and click one into the other one into the other one until you're done. I personally expected like an 80 because a lot of times in qualifying, you gotta have some grace for yourself because the first qualifying run could feel just like your second qualifying run and historically the second run is scored higher as they kind of benchmark the class and get a gauge on how everyone's doing. The second qualifying judge score tends to be higher. All right, cool. So yeah, Tito's queuing us up. We're gonna go in car real quick right here. I'm pausing this. So basically all I'm thinking about is get out of the chicane smooth and don't miss shift and find my first eye marker right like where I'm gonna look at to initiate as I'm right here into what would be like the in entrance or turn one I'm already looking at turn two once I know that I put my wheel where I want in turn one mentally and visually I'm looking ahead at turn two Now I'm on to turn three. Now I'm looking up this hill to couple point four. I in five. And so on. There you heard a bog. We'll talk about that in a bit. But let me back us up real quick too and talk a little bit just about like 
uh, when I'm getting into like from zone one to zone two, Tito, this is important. I gotta mention this. I'm like slipping the clutch in and out to set the line. So for the drivers out there watching, just imagine, you know, you're on throttle and you kind of have the, your like rut or like berm you're riding. You know what I mean? You've set your line. In order to adjust that line, I just clutch in and I'll float and I'll clutch out and I'll grip. So you'll notice me from turn one to two, I may not be lifting off the throttle, but I'm like slipping the clutch to get right on that white line to try to get obviously all the points in that zone. Okay, last thing I'm gonna say about qualifying runs would be just remember to be on throttle into the zone, right? So think about like how, uh, like in my mind personally, I related to dirt bikes, right? Think about like how you enter into a berm on a dirt bike. You wanna get all of your braking done and then power through the turn. So the same way with these zones and clipping points, you wanna enter in, set your speed, and then be on throttle in every zone. And if you need to slow down, you need to slow down prior to the zone. A self-talk on the line is huge, dude. If you think you're gonna spin, you're probably Probably gonna spin. So try your best to kick those thoughts out with something factual about the track that you're about to go do. Let's move on to what would be my first tandem battle in the GR86. Mind you, in practice, I think I got four maybe chase laps in total. Okay. Nate vs. Colette, first battle chase run. I think for this, we're just gonna do the chase runs because this is kind of where the knowledge is, the lead runs, same as your qualifying run. So, man, I got so much to say, dude. Let me back up, let me back up. All right, so off the line, your goal is to keep up with them at whatever it takes, right? In the chase car, you can jump. Whatever you need to do to be on their door on entry is going to always set you up for success. Uh, so here you can see that she actually has more grip than me. She's leaving me. I'm kind of spinning. I dive in at her. So like, I'm kind of looking at her front wheel here and I'm actually trying to almost clutch in and just float the car with as much momentum as possible. Boom, off the e-brake, back on throttle. You could see immediately she picks up pace on me. So like, I kind of already know, damn, she's faster than me. And everything going forward from here, you're gonna notice that I don't throw big angle. I kind of push the front end to try to keep up with her. Here she's like, almost leaving me in the wet. You know, like my setup is not as, as grippy as hers. Boom, she straight left me on that berm. So I'm cutting line. I need to cut angle and cut line to make up any pace that I can gain. And that's what you've seen out of this run right here is just kind of chop the line, low angle, get as close to her as possible. Because a lot of times you're watching the live stream and over the live stream, if I'm not on her door, it's not good. For me. Real quick, now we got the one more time. So just to catch you guys up, we got a one more time. And this is where I have the lead run and chase run of data in my brain. So now I know I didn't make any setup changes. She didn't make any setup changes. I need to find grip somewhere and I need to be more on throttle and a little bit more risky if I'm gonna get this win. My timing there. Told y'all. Body check there from Nate Hamilton as they get back on the throttle through six. All that momentum is gone. They're just they're just fighting to see what they can find on that wet track. Yeah, so uh, let's talk over the end car, but basically to the point that the, the announcers, Jacob and uh, them were mentioning, it's like, I need, to, I need to be on her door. So I find how to enter in and get back on throttle quicker. My transition timing here I think was great. I just follow her out as deep as she wants to go. I'm just staying on her line and trying to be on her door. Here I kept really good proximity, I'd say. Here I kind of needed to chop because she had the grip. Boom. And here's where I thought I have to put a good like aggressive transition in if I'm gonna get the win. Just slightly bumped her and I think that uh, you know that threw me and her off a bit. But basically you need a moment in tandem where you shine. And I learned that with Josiah actually at the LZ World Tour in 2022 or something where it was just sometimes just enough aggression to get the crowd to be like, what is how you can win some of those battles? So yeah, we ended up moving on, but shout out to Colette, dude. She put on a great battle and that was like really, really close. But it was cool to kind of better my second run and, and get the win there.
So we talked a little bit about like mindset in qualifying and then we talked a little bit about chasing in tandem and like one more time strategy. So let's move on to some foot cam and let's talk a little bit about like keeping the engine's RPMs up in a 2J versus a, versus a V8, right? But I did want to say if you guys have any thoughts on your qualifying struggles or like your tandem struggles, comment below so I can like address those on the next one. Again, me and Tito are just kind of firing off on these episodes right now. So like, let's see what Tito's got for us. Ooh, right there, dude, that's the spot. So first let's back up and talk a little bit about leaving the line and uh, you know, just like what's cool, like if you're a driver, dude, put a little GoPro down by your feet. You'd be surprised at like overlaying just a phone video in your foot cam and just watching what your feet do. Half of this stuff that I watch, I'm like, damn, I did that. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's all happening that quick and it's really cool to actually go study yourself. I think you guys will learn a lot if you can just watch some foot cam. But loosely speaking, let's start over and I'll try to talk over this a bit here. You know, I think too, when I'm watching this, I'm thinking a little bit about like I'm on the line clutch in one and you see me like kind of pedaling the pedal and that's where I'm finding the grip so just you would think to yourself like why doesn't he just like floor it clutch in floor it clutch in floor it where I'm still learning the car and I'm trying to like actually feel the rear end like lose grip or gain grip and so those little moments like that are where I'm like balancing that grip out you will notice uh, there's a technique in drifting called uh, heel toe. So if I do press on the brake, you can use your heel to stay on the actual throttle. I am not good at this and I don't really even do this, but you'll notice if I put the clutch in and I'm on the brake, I'm super quick to get back and light the throttle back up. Uh, we talked about this in episode one, but basically your rear wheel speed, anytime that you have the clutch in, what's happening? you're losing rear wheel speed, right? Because the rear wheel is now clutch in, disengaged, and you're technically gonna lose wheel speed. So immediately when you let that clutch back out, you have to be like on full power, and you really hope that the power band is still there. And you guys will notice in uh, this last section of this exact track, I actually would lose the power band. So the engine would feel super loaded, and I wasn't able to light the tires up like I wanted, and I would have to slip the clutch. So let's talk a little bit about that. Dylan Hughes taught me this. So thank you, Dylan, for explaining it to me so smooth. In a V8, like in my 240 that I'm used to for my whole life, I've been able to basically release the clutch and at the same time apply the throttle. And essentially the low end torque of the V8 can like pick this throttle up and it doesn't really cause me to feel any difference of a like lack of power. Now, I can do the same technique in the JZ and I feel like I have, I mean, it feels like a lifetime, right? It's probably two seconds where the engine is like roar, like loaded and not freeing up the rear wheel to allow my angle and line to be what I imagine it being. So Dylan taught me this with the JZ platform. Instead of releasing the clutch and applying the power at the same time, essentially, I need to apply the throttle and release the clutch so it's a bit like awkward for me to load the throttle up like basically get back on limiter and then let the clutch in the car handle it all where I feel like I'm just trained to be a bit more like smooth with releasing like it's gnarly on the drivetrain I guess is what I'm trying to say and I'm trying to learn that this drivetrain can handle that abuse and that's how these boys are driving the Jay-Z's to not lose any power band anywhere is they're essentially full throttle release clutch load the drivetrain up and it will take it so it's taking me some time to like actually implement that into my driving and you guys could see that in that clip where I come out of uh, whatever turn three into turn four and the engine's like Roar! and so that little time gap to the judges and everyone watching they can hear it and it doesn't feel like Nate's on throttle butter on throttle butter so that's a technique I'm currently working on. <laughs> Nico 999. So he was saying, uh, basically talk more about left foot braking. Much 
like not just stomping on the brake when understeering towards a wall, my brain has a hard time convincing my feet to be on throttle and the brake at the same time when needed. So let's talk about this. For, again, this is like me personally. So like, I definitely think there's others out there that have techniques when it comes to left foot braking, but I'll try to think about some left foot brake moments for myself, which one of them I could think of would be the easiest example is in tandem, right? Like I wanna have enough grip to surge up on somebody, but at the same time, I cannot let the rear wheel speed slow down. So I will left foot brake on throttle in the chase to just monitor the car's speed while staying 100% on throttle. So it'd be similar to if you took your car on a skid pad and you started doing a burnout. And then when you got into like a figure eight, you applied the front brake and you like stop the car and do a standing burnout. And then you lift off the brake and you try to like just start walking yourself around like the parking lot. Think about it like that. So you can drive the car on throttle and just left foot brake when you're chasing someone just to slow the chassis speed down. It's Noel 15. Awesome video, teach us alignment and grip next. I definitely think we could get into alignment and grip. I think there's a lot to say about tires, tire pressures, your actual wheel and tire combination, you know, your actual like toe in, camber. I think there's a lot to do there and I think we should save that for like episode three maybe. Um, but I would say on grip, just we could talk tire pressure for two seconds. God, then it goes into all the details, dude. Like what size wheel, what size tire? Well, how much power are you running? There's a formula to it. Let's Let's run this on the next episode. Hit us in the comments on uh, more questions. So the first video got a lot of good responses. Let's see what you guys want to learn more on. And again, dude, I'm just making, I'm just kind of giving y'all my perspective. So I hope this helped somebody. I'll see y'all for another episode later.